time I did this. I should say I did remember to record. Uh, let's see here. I just want to let you all know that I am recording, and that uh, just kind of FYI, just need to make sure and let you know. And awesome. So we're going to be talking about. Oh, that's not the right. I think it is the right one, but it has the wrong has the wrong title right here. That should be top five ways to improve presentations. There you go. You, you get you get to see some happening live. I think I might have just forgotten to change that. Um, I will be sharing this slide with you, the slide deck, um, before the end of the session. And uh, first off, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Claudio Zavala, Jr., and I am. My role is a digital designer in uh, Burleson, Texas. This is, an, if you're not familiar with Texas, so it's close in the DFW area, so Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex, um, kind of towards the top of Texas. So, um, and it is nine o'clock here. I'm not sure what time it is where you're at. If you're on the West Coast, seven o'clock start time. Um, do I have anybody from out of the States? Out of curiosity. Well, thank you for the follow, and I'll be sure to follow you back. So let's just kind of get to see who's here. If you would just type where you're from. This is just a, a cool thing, just like to know, being that we're doing a global edtech. Arizona Apache Junction. So we, I, I grew up in California, so we do drive to um, California. Um, last time we drove was during Thanksgiving, obviously before the whole COVID hit. So um, I don't know if we, if that's close to where we, we, we take, we drive um, the 10 and then we shoot off on the 8, so the south part. La Jolla, that, that's kind of my, close to my old stomping grounds. I went to San Diego State University, so um, I'm familiar with La Jolla. I grew up in the San Diego County area. I see someone from Maryland, cool, in Canada, Vancouver. So um, I, it's on my bucket list to go to British Columbia. I love to mountain bike, and I hear they have some awesome mountain biking up in that area. Oh, cool. I'm working at... SDSU, awesome. Yeah, um, that's like my bucket list to go to Canada. So um, hopefully soon. So, all right. So, um, so hopefully that wasn't too loud. Let me know too if the audio isn't loud enough. Just um, if you kind of give me a, a thumbs up in the chat or say audio is fine, um, let me know. I can turn it up. And if it's too loud, let me know as well. I can turn it down. So we have someone from Chicago. Cool. Everything's good. Awesome. All right. So ways to improve your presentation. So I'm going to give you some practical tips and just ideas. And I also have like a little extra one towards the end of, of how to improve when you are maybe presenting to your students, obviously, first and foremost, but also presenting maybe to a faculty, or maybe you're doing a, a presentation. So in this example, I'm be, being that we're uh, doing this as part of the Global EdTech Academy requested us to use a certain thematic colors and style guide for these presentations. And so um, it's kind of, if you've been attending, you kind of see the similarities. And that, which is a good thing because uh, I'm going to mention that, I believe so, during the session. So um, here it's kind of like the 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 three things that that I say kind of like the three sections is um, going to talk about cognitive load theory, kind of um, a little bit of information as far as why um, how does that apply to like when you're creating a presentation, and it's not like my top five ways to improve. So I, I say these like top five. It's not like the end all be all, but it's kind of like through the years that I've been working. So I've been doing, working with educators for about ooh, 14 years. Been te was teaching in the classroom. Actually, let me rewind. About 12 years, 13 years in the classroom. So 20, close to 25 years in, in the ed 
education world. So, um, so I'll give you my top five ways to improve presentations. I apologize for the noise in the background. They just finished up having a, a get together, my wife with her friend. So they're just wrapping up. So if you hear anything in the background, that's what's going on. Uh, so the top five ways and then an extra tip towards the end. And so first off, um, cognitive load theory and kind of what I'm going to share with you, how does this apply to when you're presenting? And um, so one of the questions I, I'd ask you to think about is, is, are you overloading your students with information when you present to them? Are you kind of bombarding them with data on the screen, um, even online? Um, are, are you just kind of? Um, I we used to do, there was a saying you're you're um, kind of like a this was a design teacher that taught taught us this. There's a shotgun approach, and then there's like the the very fine. I mean, uh, uh, forgive for the the terminology, but. That's what they use the shotgun in the kind of like the focused, very fine tuned uh, shot. As far as like, you know, you just you hopefully something gets there. But if you're strategic and you're fine, you know, you, you're kind of targeted, you'd be able to give them that information they need. So, what is cognitive load theory? So, let's, I'm going to give you some of the things that can attribute to that load theory and then how does it apply to your students. So, Putting up too much text in a presentation, um, and you don't need to say you've done this before. I've been guilty of doing it before. I started learning this, and just putting a lot of information on a. For, it could be a slide. It could be uh, a page that you show to your students. It could even be on a web page um, presentation. It's just a lot of information. So if you see here, I just kind of, I went and Googled um, terrible presentations. If you, if you get a chance, Bing or Google, do a search, a web search, and look up terrible presentations. And then you'll kind of see all the different ones. And so like this one has to do with um, uh, vehicles. And so you can see here, so if I was presenting this, what is the intent? So I've sat through presentations where someone actually read the whole paragraph, in this case, two of them. And you know, first of all, I can read, but secondly, it's like, well, why not just send this in an email and not just have us read in a presentation? So too much text. Um, something else like this one here, something if it's very busy, um, if, it, if there's just like no, I could say organization to it, no purpose, no intentionality to it. Now there may be something here, but that's just like a lot. So if you were to look at this, you would either have to be into kind of like social kind of media, creative commons type thing, and, and you may be able to decipher what this is. But if this is like your first look into it, you might like, ah, this is just too much. I'm, I'm going to fall asleep during this part of the presentation and just wait till the next part. And then uh, contrasting so things if you're ever seen something where it is difficult to read so contrast uh, a, a background color with a front color so for example like if you're watching me right now so i have kind of like this light hitting me right now and then i have those blue lights behind me to kind of create a contrast between the background in the foreground, which is me. So in as far as text presentation, you want to take advantage of that contrast and use it to your advantage. In this case, we got an image and we got text. I can read it just because I'm sitting about two feet from my screen. But if you're sitting 30, 30 feet in the back, you're sitting as a student trying to read this, you might not be able to get it. So, so how does that all that work into cognitive load? theory and when you're making a presentation and the five ways i'm going to share with you to kind of help minimize this uh, so let me kind of give you a little background myself i'm i'm my first language was spanish i'm an, i was an english language learner which i think everybody is for the most part in the states but i was learning english and for for me when you are 
learning a new language. And it could be now if you're learning a, a new language, let's say, say you're trying to learn French or, or Portuguese or something. And you're trying to gain and learn the language as well as the, the subject, the content. So as a student, second language student, um, even a student that, that is seeing something for the very first time, it could be even a high school student, middle school student who's learning about, uh, let's see, chemistry. And, you know, I'm having to, first of all, learn one, the content, and but also if I, if it's presented to me in kind of like those those ways that I share with you was just busy, it's just too much text. So my brain is trying to figure out, okay, what is it? What is it that I need to focus on? I'm trying to figure out the screen, the layout, the content. I mean, the the other student next to me playing with the pencil, all those different things playing the role of cognitive load. So you think about now of your students as you're presenting information to them. And, and, and you know, I, I know we have standards that we have to address. And um, I was in the campus once at one school where we had to write down every standard and the kids had to know each standard, like 2.11, we're gonna identify like to that. And, and you know, it got to a point where like, let's just make it easy. Like I'm learning about triangles. And they don't have to know that the standards at some campuses, they actually had to know the number, which uh, anyways, that's a, that's another conversation. But so you think, I hope this is making sense. Um, just kind of let me know. Um, give me a thumbs up or say, you know, that, um, can, is, it, is it making sense? Maybe just say, yes, it's making sense. Um, and then when I share with you how all these things will apply, help minimize that load. All right. So let's now going to jump into those five ways to help improve your presentations as you're putting your presentation together, you're laying it out, you're designing it, you're, you're jumping to a new unit of study uh, content. And so now I, I got to, I have to present this to my students, maybe I'm creating a web page presentation and something visual that's going to be in front of them. So here are like my top five ways to help improve the students being able to grasp the information and make it easy for them to focus on what is it that you're trying to teach them. So here are the five things. We're going to talk about color. We're going to talk about fonts, imagery, consistency, and then empty space. And then I have a little extra towards the end, like, like one extra tip. So uh, let's go with, let's talk a little bit about color. So I'm going to show you this design here and uh, this one if you're looking at it um, I can see so so if you look at it on your screen it may be hurting your eyes and you know I'm not trying to purposely hurt your eyes but um, you know if you were to let's say you were to put a presentation like this for your students with a green background like that um, in letters you know your students would be squinting, trying to figure out what this is. So color makes a big difference. So let's do the same design, but just kind of change it up a little bit. Um, you know, the look purple. I may not put a purple background on my presentation, but just kind of to make the emphasis between these two. Now, the other thing about color that, that you need to know about your students, especially when using like a solid color background, you're like, oh, I like purple because I, my my school colors are purple. You know, my alma mater is black, red, and white. I want a, a, a red background. You know, which are which is cool. You you know, uh, but at the same time, think of your students. First of all, visually, you may have students that are colorblind, and it just depends on the color blindness blindness that they have. Maybe they can't see blue colors. Uh, maybe they can't see certain colors. Um, I don't know if you've ever done that test. There's like little dots and seeing if you can see the, the numbers. So for your students, they may be seeing this and blue for them looks green. So for them, it just says and a monthly newsletter, but they don't see design. Well, if I were to change it, they may be able to see this. But then I may have another student who, not, who can't see like purple. So, you know, thinking about the colors, 
So what are some tips for, for this to help out? So tips for using color. So I'm going to give you kind of like three tools for using color. The uh, color wheel is the kind of one of the, the, I think, primary grades my wife teaches kinder and they like you, know, you learn the colors, the primary colors. And then from there, you get all those other colors. Also taking advantage of color schemes and then there's some tools to help you with, with colors. So one of my um, tips with using color in presentations, white, it, it looks bland. They're like, yeah, it's not fancy. It's not, you know, but you want it to look presentable for your students, but at the same time, a white background will accomplish a ton. So if, if you look, for example, at this, pres I'm gonna kind of jump up, go back through here. So if you notice, all of these kind of have a white kind of background to it. It, it, it. It's very effective, the white, the white color, and then putting the colors on top of it. So let's look at color wheels here and, and the way colors play. Colors give off also a certain type of emotion. Um, I'm not going to get too much into, um, I'm going to say, talking about moods of color, but um, in like red kind of gives off hot, blue kind of cool colors. So as you're making your presentations, you know, about strategically think about those colors. I don't know if you've ever driven down the highway, the streets. If you look at restaurants, a lot of the food restaurants, McDonald's are yellow, red, Carl's Jr., yellow, red. I'm trying to think what other ones. Canes here in Texas is yellow and red. It's a ton of yellow, a ton of red. Kentucky Fried Chicken's got red. Pizza Hut's got red. Domino's got blue and red. Um, and if you look at dealerships, a lot of them have like, well, blue signs um but you can't you start to pay attention to those color things like oh i'm hungry i want to go hey there's yellow there's the arches so you can't you kind of get conditioned to thinking about those colors so um so thinking about the colors kind of the color wheel here and taking the like how to use the colors on your pr presentation so kind of here are some kind of three different um that you know you may be familiar with these um you got your different your um oh god uh my mind has just gone blank it's probably uh, when i get to the color color tools i'll remember but you got your complementary colors and then an analogous color and then triadic number colors uh complementary a lot of the opposite colors um i see chicago someone from chicago here so the chicago bears are blue and orange very complementary colors it looks great on a uniform um you have let's see purple and gold the lakers i grew up in san diego growing up at lakers fans you got those complementary colors that look kind of great together like man that's just sharp and then you, you put that those colors on the white background just clean and, and then you have your analogous color which are kind of like very close to each other they just kind of go well together and then you have your triadics kind of like your color wheel um so those are kind of think of those colors and so now to show you some color tools that will help um this one right here so, um these are different ones and again i'm going to share this with you i won't um this one right here is um adobe color so let me know can you see this right here i just want to make sure um that you can see this let me know oops can you all see this uh Okay, perfect. This is a really cool site right here. So talked about where the analogous complementary colors. And if you're unsure like what colors go well together and still kind of thinking of your, um, let's say your, your students who may have color blindness. So there's a really cool thing here. So my tip, like my approach when I design, I kind of stick with two colors. I kind of try to stay with two, maybe add a little bit on a third one. It's kind of like a, a tertiary, um, uh, kind of trying to think, accent or something like that. So if you if, check this out, when I turn these, look what happened to the colors. And it's kind of giving you colors, how they kind of go well together. I think it, I should be able to like rotate this here. I think the middle one does it for me. Yeah, see how I rotate? those colors kind of 
it just looks so nice together. And then if you're not familiar with when you're using colors, pretty much every software um, from, I would say, Word, Google, Adobe, any pretty much everyone uses these colors, which are called hex colors, these six digit numbers. And they also use these what are called RGB, which is your red, um, green and blue and then black to kind of help you with the colors. Give me one second. I'm going to plug in my power because my. Yes, I will share with the I will share this with you all. Um, I'll go ahead and here. I'll go ahead and do that now. It'll be in it'll be in the in the presentation too. OK, let me see if my. Yes, it worked. It's on it's oops. It's on your it's on the way there. Um, OK, um, OK, coming back here. So they you, you can type in those numbers of pretty much any software, like when you're putting a, in a PowerPoint, you like don't like that color. You can type in those RGB numbers or those the hex colors. Um, and as I was saying, I kind of go with those complementary, kind of stick with those that are on the opposite. Like just because I I'm kind of like very minimal in the colors. I like kind of like the two, um, and maybe a third kind of accent color. Now this is really neat. Check out just how nice these colors look well together. And if you look up here on the top right, you have these. So if I have a white background, I may use like this dark kind of turquoise color as like a a, a band on the bottom of my presentation, and I may have like a thin line of this blue right above it or at the top kind of like just creating kind of like a, a top layer and then and then put text on top of it that's kind of the approach i would take or do these other colors and then just like a black text now this is really neat right here this accessibility tools you click on here so if you see right here there are no conflicts found let me zoom in here no conflicts found swatches are colorblind safe Awesome. So if you're ever unsure, so let's let's try to find, let's try to see if we can find something that that's not safe. So let's put potential conflict. Let's see. Let's see if we can click it again. Does it refresh? Let's see. Okay, here's a good one. Here's a good one. D and E are in conflict. D and E move the swatch on the color wheel to make colors distinct and colorblind safe. So right here, this is great. So let's move this this way. So now A. So check out, see over here on the left, see how it changes. So now it's safe. So this is a really cool site. Check it out if you get a chance to. Um, oops, didn't really zoom in. So when you're looking at, at colors, and again, that white background, you'll never go wrong with a nice white background, and then use these colors as, as your accents for like the, the top layer. And, you know, if you download a template, you can always go in and change the colors of a template to like colors that, like I, I want some other colors. So go back to the color wheel here, complementary. see let's check this one no conflict found so awesome and then you can go over here and save these colors if you you can create a free adobe account if you want and you can save color so that is the um color wheel so i'm going to jump back over here and there's some other sites this one's called coolers um not to be confused with like a cooler cooler um so it's very it's it's kind of similar so on this one you can make palettes. So right here, start the generator. Let's go. So then kind of just let's skip this here. And then you have your kind of like colors. Now, I'm not too familiar with this one. A friend of mine shared this with me. But here, view palette. But if, if it has kind of like that color, here it is, color blindness. Let's click that. So it looks like this one's okay. So there's pro protonopia. I'm, I'm, I think those are types of color blindness, maybe. 
So this might not be a good choice to undo. So you can go through and try different ones. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, and then Colorzilla and Adobe Capture is a really cool app on a phone. It's available on Android and iOS. I'm going to see if I can just show you how it looks like and what it does. So let's say, for example, you like you you see, I do this every, every when I'm at a at a conference. I'll use this app and um, not there either someone has a really cool looking backpack with different colors or someone has a, a purse with a really cool designs and colors. And what I'll do is uh, I'll I'll get my um, so let me see, I'll kind of like take a picture of it and then let's see if it, you can see it. Oh. No, I think you're, I think you're seeing my presentation right now. But um, or I don't know, can you see me? Let's see. If you pin me, I think you can. Oh yeah, there I am on the lower lower corner. But you can see the different colors. So really cool, um, really cool tool to try out. Okay, let's come back to the. Cool. I think a while back I wasn't sure if people can see me or not. Okay, so colors. Um, Think about it for your students, especially when you're creating a presentation. And if you put lots of colors, so you got to think of it. If I'm going to teach students an introduction to, um, like I like I said, uh, chemistry, and I got this thing full of different colors, I don't know if it's my students can see it or not. You know, I'm like, well, he's just not listening. Well, I can't read it because those colors aren't well. So, color first one, fonts. The next thing. A little bit of fonts before I jump in on why fonts are important with cognitive load theory and with your presentation. So there's two types. Basically, fonts are put into two categories. You have serif fonts, which have those little curly tails or curly curly, curly cues, and then your sans serif uh, fonts, which are basically kind of your your. Some may say, "Oh, those are just boring. They're not very fancy," um, but they it's sometimes easier for the eyes on a screen now there's there's a debate between like well never use always use sans serif on electronics projectors on websites never use serif there's like a and then they're like well no you can use serif but you can make sure you use it strategically intentional so right it's kind of like a back and forth right now so it's like you know well claudio said never use serif well no you just have to make sure you use this strategically. Like maybe I would use it for like the title and then everything else is in sans serif or maybe just a few things. So um, it's just sometimes maybe easier on the eye to read certain ones. And then um, when you're putting words on a screen, make sure you give enough space for your words. I've seen, I did it in a presentation, but I just didn't, didn't want to share it here, but um, I've seen some signs and I've looked up online of the words don't say what they say. It looks like something inappropriate, but just because the words were mushed together. So think about when you're creating a presentation, space those words out, make it easier for your students to be able to discern what is what is there. So here kind of like my tips for fonts. Try to keep them to two, two fonts two different fonts in a presentation you know but like i just want that extra third one you know again if you're strategic if it's intentional if it's part of a presentation like it has to be then yeah by all means but if you try to keep it a minimum of two i i'm gonna i'm i've seen presentations where there are about five different fonts because i just love those different fonts and but you know it's, it's not about me it's about trying to make sure my students can understand it so keep them at two. Avoid distracting fonts. Um, I've seen um, years back we used to have this software. I'm not going to name the name of the software. Um, it's not. It wasn't a Microsoft software, but um, and they had these like fancy looking fonts that had all this like animation to it, which is you know we we use animations on social media, which is kind of appropriate, but um, when in a presentation, you know, if I'm li I'm sitting I'm sitting at my desk and watching my teacher give an introduction about um, let's say um, U.S. history, and 
you know, we're, we're learning about the Constitution or something, but there's this animated text over here. Well, the whole time the teacher's talking, it's going to be like Charlie Brown. If you're familiar with Charlie Brown, the peanuts, blah, 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 because I'm just looking at this distracting font. And then, all right, what? Did, okay, now we're done. Are you going to go do your work? I'm like, uh, all I remember is that font. So, um, if it's if it's meant to be part of a like a, a, an example, then yeah. But if it's not, try to avoid those distracting fonts. And lastly, is use non-default font fonts. For example, lots of different softwares that you may use have like their default font. Uh, one of the most popular ones is Arial, uh, Helvetica, um, Times New Roman, Comic Sans. That's a that's a huge culprit. <laughs> a lot of people use that. It's like there's a funny saying like never use Comic Sans. But try to go to something that's not uh, a non-default font. Like explore the fonts in there. There's some condensed one which are kind of like shorter like this little taller maybe a lot sharper so um that's kind of my tips for your for the fonts hey, guys everyone i say guys that's general um if you have any questions please feel free to to let me know in the chat um feel free to stop me okay so now i'm going to move on to talking about images in your presentation so again we've talked color we've talked fonts and you know you're thinking okay Maybe now you're thinking about your presentation, maybe when you had like, or you're putting one together for the fall and you're like, ooh, I need to go back and rethink that presentation. And how am I going to deliver that information to my students? Well, then, I mean, I use images a lot in my presentations. Um, whatever software I'm using, a lot, talking about creativity, I'm using images to talk about content. Well, you want to be purposeful with those images because, you know, that cliche saying a picture is worth a thousand words we want to make sure that picture is effective so when when using effective Im using images effectively is um we, you know we want to use the images to kind of tell what's going on a sequence of events a happening um we also want to try to avoid mixing images and i'll share i'll share with you what that means mixing of images and ultimately one of my huge biggest tips for this when you are creating presentations is using your own images. So let me see. Um, I'll talk about, let me talk about the last one here, using your own images. So actually, I, let's see. Okay, I'll talk about it there. Let, I'll, I'll, I'll hold off my excitement about that. All right, so telling, using images to tell stories. Okay, so here we have, um, Pull this in regard. This was like a kind of a yoga presentation. And there's a lot of information here. Reasons to add yoga to your gym. And, you know, we're looking at this. Uh, there's some bullet points and we're reading it. You know, there's, there's a lot of money involved in it. Um, people spend lots of money, five to seven billion a year. OK, so that's cool. All right. Awesome. Well, we're going to take this information. And we're going to use images and still text to convey what this is. So by looking at this, we know it's yoga because it says yoga. Now over here, this next one, same information. That's actually 5.7, not five to seven. So here we go, 5.7 5 billion. So if I were doing a presentation talking about yoga, this would be a lot more effective than this. So now we're gonna, now we're doing kind of like an opposite thing as far as a white background. Now we're using kind of an image as our kind of background. So if you notice when you're using an image here, notice that the ladies doing the kind of yoga pose and over to the right or to the left, there's a lot of real estate there that we can use to share information. So right there, 5.7 billion. So kind of like, if you look at that red space, it kind of makes your eye kind of flow up to her, her image and then the text. Very effective use of an image and information. And here's another one. There's another image. And there's, you know, 5.8 million yoga practitioners. You, If from today you, you'll remember yoga stuff, you'll say like yoga's, I remember yoga. 
I remember how many how many how much money is spent in yoga. Um, so, but think about the difference. You're presenting to your students like this, and I'm want to present to them. Let's say this is information about. Okay, I, I said U.S. history, and there's maybe there's a picture of of let's see Statue of Liberty over here on the right, and then there's empty space here, like the 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 background of New York, but it's faded out. You could put text there. So kind of thinking strategically about your images. So using images to tell the story. So now I'm going to talk about the the mixing of images. And so here's kind of what I meant by that. So over here on the left and right, we have images and verses. So here's why. When you're making a presentation, you're creating a presentation. Um, so you have um, going through slides one through three, one through, let's say, 12. And on the first slide, you have a, a, a picture of like a real looking vehicle like this. And on your next slide, you have a cartoony looking picture of a bike. And in the next slide, you got airplane and then the train. So you're 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 kind of mixing images as opposed to the one on the right where you have kind of like all clip art type of images. So you want to kind of you want to go one you gotta if I'm gonna use clip art, use clip art throughout your whole presentation. Kind of stick with clip art. If you're gonna use images, real images, use real images. So for example, if I'm teaching students kind of like about desert animals. And so we have a, a rattlesnake, we have a roadrunner, coyote, we have an owl, a turtle. Well, I have a picture of a, an owl, like a real owl, and then I have a cartoony looking picture of a rabbit, jackrabbit, and then uh, kind of a squiggly line for a snake, and then like a like a real picture of a of a of a hawk, and then kind of cartoon. So, student, this is kind of interesting. This is this. A student were like, oh, so the hawk, the, the coyote kind of looks cartoony. You know, think of it like if there's an, someone from outer space come in and learning about it. Like, oh, these, this is what I need to look at when I'm out in the desert. It's going to look cartoony. So I hope that's very kind of like dramatic, but think of it that way. And your students are trying to figure out, you know, okay, learning what how to say coyote in English, but also trying to figure out the images. So be consistent. So that's kind of what I mean by being cons consistent with your images. Now, speaking of images, where can I find images in that? Just say images. This is what's going on here. Okay, so here's some places that you can go find some images. So flat icon, uh, that's a place that you can go access free um, some are free, some are not. Some they'll ask you for permit, like credit, credit the person who created the the image. So let's here, for example, let me log into my account here and show you. So let's say I'm doing, um, you know, I want to get like some cartoony looking or or icons of like a of a. Uh, this is going to be funny, but a, a disc. Students nowadays like, what is that? You know, well, if I make a presentation, I'm teaching about technology. If I if I go with a with a graphic like this, well, then I want to stick with graphic like this the whole time. If I'm going to use a picture, then I'll use a picture. Um, I used to subscribe to this uh, this service. Um, sometimes I'll subscribe if I, I'm creating content for somebody. Um, I'll kind of subscribe and and. Uh, they have great like social media ones, but you know, pictures of, of um, so many different types of icons. This is a great place to check out. Um, now, Unsplash and Pixabay are, are royalty. I like Unsplash. Sometimes they have better stuff. Um, Unsplash and Pixabay are kind of like free usable images. Um, the thing is, though, you can't make, like, for example, if I use an image here and make, like, a, a poster and then I go try to sell the poster, well, I didn't pay to actually use their image to create a poster to sell. So, basically, I'm having permission to use the image. So, I'm going to use it in a presentation so I can look for, like, for, let's say, uh, we, we said 
let's see owl i'm hoping it's like appropriate pictures because you know people post share images so here's some like really nice looking owl pictures i may like down one download one of these and use it in my presentation um so now having said that the last thing in regards to going back to my three things about images is always if you can use your own images i highly highly recommend first of all they're yours no one will ever say you stole the picture um but then think of how powerful it is if you're using your own pictures okay so we're doing we're learning about shapes in math or we're learning about triangles well if i spend the afternoon or something the morning and go around campus taking pictures with my phone of hallways easeways walls buildings tops of buildings where there's shapes i can bring those into my presentation and when we're talking about shapes triangles rectangles circles spheres or whatever well i'm using pictures from my campus well think about the connection with your students who are like hey that's outside i know where that's at so you know they're making that kind of quick connection because hey i know where that's at maybe it's in a neighborhood maybe it's a, a market area um close to where they live in some areas where they recognize and they're like hey I, I know that park i know where that's at you know we're talking about diamonds you know there's a baseball field there that they're familiar with so think how powerful it is if you can use your own images so if you can um weather allowing i mean always recommend if you use your own images they may not look as professional as these and that's okay you know but you're conveying that and you're making that connection with your students okay i think we're coming to okay we got two more so i gotta kind of speed things up here uh consistency so what am i being by consistency that is repetition themes and style this presentation that i'm using perfect example of consistency if you notice i'm gonna hop kind of quickly through look at that kind of been consistent in the style that this is and here's another here's an important thing of that is if i'm teaching my students and i have a certain style of the way my my presentation is then my students have learned it they don't have to like oh I don't have to figure out their presentation. I know it. Now I can focus on the content. So think of the opposite. What if every presentation that I give my students, it has a whole different theme, a whole different style. Well, my, you know, today I learned about triangles and tomorrow I'm learning, or today I learned about equilateral, tomorrow isosceles. Well, it's a different design. Well, now I'm like, what? Well, you know, maybe I would have made them all themed the same. So they're kind of in the same family. So the students don't have to figure out, compete with that. I have to learn the content, but also try to figure out your presentation. Once they know that's the intro, that's the title, there's a page number. Okay, with my next presentation, I know they know it, so they don't have to try to figure it out. They can glance and know, and then focus on the content. So that's kind of why you want to remain consistent. So here's kind of an example that I used. Uh, a few years back, I started this thing on social media, and. Twitter called sing a song and it was like a weekly theme so if you notice I stuck with this kind of theme for a while and I had kind of the same style of font same style of background so when people saw this on Twitter they knew oh that's the next thing oh that's the next one so it, it they got used to, so I kind of I want to say conditioned people but they got used to like oh they see this oh there's something new it's different oh so that's kind of like why you want to kind of be consistent and be kind of almost want to say brands you and not you know not for purposes for making money but just you created kind of your identity okay and then empty space taking advantage of empty space on a presentation that's tip number five don't overcrowd the slide one word or phrase along with an image try space before adding before adding content, try space. Now, I'm all about chunking information for students, giving them bite-sized content, especially when you're doing, if 
um, you know, I just heard Cal, uh, San Diego and Los Angeles are going to be virtual this fall. Well, when you're giving this information to your students, you want to chunk it. You don't want to overcrowd, this, you know, the slide, the presentation. You want to kind of chunk the pieces. So overcrowding is kind of avoiding that, um, avoiding, I would say, chunking is the opposite of overcrowding. Here we go. Like you want small bites. So again, going back to this, this is a perfect example of not crowding the space. Kind of you taking advantage of empty space right here as well. We kind of have a nice white space in between this blank space here. We're taking advantage of color setting like a bell. You notice the tree. So it's kind of got that it's blending together. And then here, you know, we're doing we're learning about Abraham Lincoln. So this is kind of like my intro slide. So I've got a really cool picture of Abraham Lincoln. I found a free use image. And then they see this. So you, there's this, all this empty space up here and you're going to be tempted. I need to put something there. You don't always need to put something there. You can keep it very minimal. Um, less sometimes is more. So take advantage of if you if you figure yourself like, oh, I need to add something. Think, you know, step back and think, OK, I can always add it to the next slide. And maybe not even have to add more information. I can kind of do some interactive activity with students. You know, maybe take a guess about Abraham Lincoln. Maybe they never heard about Abraham Lincoln. This is their first introduction. So you're like, you know, it's got that beard. And um, so you kind of use this along with something else. So take advantage of that blank space. So those are my top five ways to help you improve your presentations. Now, I promised you I have an extra one. And the extra one is just keep it very simple. Keep your keep it simple. Um, oh, yeah, Marilyn, thank you for sharing that. Um, I'm going to share this right here. There's a uh, Marilyn shared this um, remove dot BG for background. Let's go ahead and just kind of really quickly share that um, remove dot BG. This is really great. So let's say you found an image or you took a picture and you can do this. You upload it here. Now it is free, but there's a limit on how many, like how large, um, you know, some, everything's not always free. There's always limitations, but you can do a lot with this. So like, for example, take a picture like this and remove the background and you could always put it in your presentation. It'll float by itself. And then like right here, they're using it for like um, different types of backgrounds. This is a great tool kind of give you the way it looks like. Um, there's powerful um, math going on here to to do that. So like that, if I were doing a thing about dogs, I remove the background. I have like the dog in my presentation. Really cool. Thanks for sharing that, Marilyn. Great, t great tool. You know, so coming back to this, keep it simple. Try to, you know, less is more. Sometimes you may think oh, I need to add that extra, but you know, the my the tips that I'm giving you is really to try to keep it simple, right? For your students, um, you want to give them the information, but you don't want to overload their brains with them trying to figure out your presentation, your style, as well as learn the content. Because again, you will be speaking probably at the same time as they're looking at a presentation or or a guide or a website. Um, you know, like I mentioned, we're going virtual in the fall. It's something that they may be doing independently, so you want to kind of. Give them the, the the just the facts, ma'am, kind of like on the presentation. And with that, I think we're kind of wrap up here. I'm going to give you a couple of things I'm going to share with you. Um, and I, Anne, I did see that you said you followed. I'm gonna, when we're done, I'm going to make sure and follow you back. But if you are interested, I do. Um, they gave us opportunity to share some information. So I have uh, my YouTube channel that I um, release a video every week. In fact, today, Tuesday is. I release a video every Tuesday. Um, every Wednesday, I have a show uh, called Creators Lounge, where I interview people and we talk about the creative process. Um, it could be educators, musicians, artists, all different walks of life, but we just talk about creativity So, and the creative process. So if you are interested, check out my YouTube channel. This will be linked when I share it to you. And I also have a website, IamClaudius.com, so feel free to check out my site. You could also get to my YouTube channel from there. And uh, I have links to all my social media places. And speaking of social media, this is my handle. You are more than welcome to follow. That should be 
completed. Oh, not that. Um, but yeah, be I love connecting with in the, with teachers, educators, anyone just kind of learning from each other. And so if you are interested, if you're on Twitter, um, let me tell you, I got onto Twitter a few years back and it's been a huge um, ad advantage learning from others on social media so much. It's it's a great place uh, to check out. Oh, okay. I'm going to go check you out right now, Marilyn. Um, so before we go, let me let me get this let me just make a quick adjustment here i'm going to share this with you all and then i'm going to drop this into the chat hopefully it works so i'm going to go ahead and do i'm going to see here stop my presentation i want to make sure i get that to you and let's see here last time it worked so just making sure it works again and oh it's still it's still uploading Almost there. So I'm kind of looking at that. any questions while this is kind of getting ready to upload. Hopefully this has been helpful. Some gain some information on how you can get your presentations uh, kind of um, making them much, uh, let's say, readable for your students in, in trying to reduce that that load on their brains um, as they're learning new information. This, there's a whole science behind kind of marketing and this kind of a, a way is marketing. You're kind of marketing the information for your students. Okay, here we go. Okay, it says it's sending. And it, okay, let me know if you got it. You can feel free to download it from there, save it to your desktop. Awesome. So all the links are in there to all the different color tools and uh, image tools, font tools. So check it out. Well, hey, everyone. Well, we got about five minutes to spare. First of all, thank you for spending the evening with me um, talking about ways to improve your presentation. And hope you have a great rest of your evening from in Canada, Chicago, in on in Arizona and let's see where else we had California. That's awesome. So great to this is really neat to be able to connect virtually. And um, if if you don't attend another session in the future, um, you know I hope and wish you all the best this fall. Uh, says and don't have access. Hmm. So if, if you try to download it, it won't let you download. Try to bring down. Hmm. Anybody else have luck with it? May just be a bug in there. Okay, let's see if this. Let's try this. Maybe this will work. How about? Okay, I shared the link. See if the link works. So I, I sent the second one is a link to it. See if that lets you use it. The last time it, everything worked just smoothly without a hitch as far as sharing a document. And today it's not cooperating. So let's see. Let me know if the link worked for you all. And if not, I have one last. Okay. Link works. Carolyn, no. Okay, Carolyn, we'll do this. Um, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Marilyn, um, let's do this. As soon as I hop off, um, I'll send you 
Um, let's see here. Okay, here this we did this last time. I'm just going to share my email address with you all. Or you can find me on Twitter. We can do it that way as well. I can always DM you the file. We can do two ways. You can Okay, let's try it again. That's not what I wanted. Okay, see if that works. Um, we can we can either do it through try opening a PowerPoint and then uploading or downloading. Okay. Well, either way, I will get this to you all, either through my email or through social media. Um, we can do it that way. Okay, as soon as we hop off, we'll go ahead and get you taken care of, get that file to you so you can see it. If you've been able to download it, but awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just call this a, a good evening for all. Feel free to, um, you're more than welcome to hop off the, the session. I'm going to stay on just to make sure anybody's, Got any questions for the very end, and then we'll wrap it up and stop the recording. But everyone, have a great night. Take care. Yes, I believe it is free. Um, you just go to that. There's a link for that. Let's uh, can share that if you want. Um, I can probably drop it into the uh, into the DM and follow me. This is McD. Okay, let's do that. Hold it wrong. It may I may need you to do it and um I'm not finding you here, so I may need to uh, I'll I'll look if you follow me there, then I'll find it. Um that probably would be easiest. Uh to just switch my theme every unit. Yeah, that's I think units is a good idea. I mean, it's taking four weeks. Yeah, I think I think that's that you know doing it thematic. It's great because um, you know your students maybe is like, okay, we're onto something new. You know, we get, we spent four weeks on this, and then we have another four weeks with a different theme. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's a good idea. I think it's a good approach, as long as you keep everything else kind of like similar as far as like your style, like uh, everything's in kind of in the same place. But you're like, oh, we got a new color. Oh, we may be shifting to something else. Hope that helps there, um, Eric. Okay. Let's see. Ah, found you. There you go. Follow me. Well, have a good night. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.